Panama City is the capital of the southern state of Central America's Land Bridge. This vibrant modern city is located in a tropical country, at which Panama's isthmus is only 80 miles wide. The country's name is famous because it contains the most important waterway in the world. And the development of both urban and rural areas is due to the presence of the gigantic Panama Canal. This massive and amazingly expensive project of building technology is best understood by traveling along it, which takes around nine hours and changes direction twice a day. Our journey begins in Panama City on the Pacific Ocean. At first, it's like traveling on a fjord, as slowly the city vanishes. Food and drink is provided. And tiny pilot boats and cargo ships have plenty of space. Soon we will see the monumental steel bridge of Puente de las Americas. The only land connection between North and South America, since the channel cuts through both continents. After traveling 12 kilometers inland, the ships must negotiate the first double lock, which takes around 45 minutes. For the first time, it's pure power, the triumph of technology over nature, and also the arrogance of power. The highest floodgates weigh 757 tons and are 25 meters high. The walls of each lock chamber contain channels for the outflow of water. The inflow comes from the ground, the water entering from an elevated lake. Soon the rising water raises the ship in the chamber by a few meters to the level of the lake, after which the actual canal follows. Small locomotives drag the ships from the side. In several lock systems, the ships are both raised and lowered simultaneously. An ingenious idea because the tides do not interrupt their operation. The first design by Ferdinand de Lesip, builder of the Suez Canal, led to failure. He wanted to build the waterway at sea level. The disastrous failure of the French was like the last gasp of the Victorian age in a world that had been dominated by Europe. Next, the increasingly powerful United States of America took over its design. And under President Theodore Roosevelt, the canal was built. The realization of a 500-year-old dream. A tasty buffet helps to fill the time before our boat can enter the Pedro Miguel lock from Lake Miraflores. In the second lock system, the procedure is becoming familiar. Ahead, huge doors open into which the ships will be dragged and the doors closed after them. To raise the ships, about 100 million liters of water are pulled by gravity into the lock chamber. This volume of water guarantees success.
As the Panama region enjoys much rainfall, there was once no danger that the canal would dry out. However, the water balance of the lake depends on the surrounding rainforests. Due to extensive deforestation and climate change, and because the tropical forest serves as a water reservoir, the flow of water back into the lakes is gradually receding. When the United States set the plan of the canal's construction in motion, the sovereign right over the required land also had to be clarified. As Colombia did not want to give it away, a revolution was threatened. On November 3, 1903, Panama was founded. So nothing more stood in the way of the canal construction scheme across the isthmus that divided the new state in two. On May the 4th, 1904, the Americans officially began construction of the Panama Canal. The ingenious new solution was a canal at varying heights. At the turn of the 20th century, the self-conscious, barely 100-year-old United States was poised to become a world power. Particularly difficult was the section through the Culebra Ridges that meant cutting a channel through 90-meter-high cliffs. At a length of 14 kilometers, rock, gravel, clay and soil had to be removed. 6,000 workers, 300 local people and 70 excavators were used. The most complex section now appears to be quite serene. And in addition to cargo ships, tourists also use the canal. At the exit of Corte de Culebra and at a height of 26 meters, the 423 square kilometer Lake Getun begins, with tropical vegetation as far as the eye can see. After around 40 kilometers, the third lock system follows, the Gaichun locks where the ships are lowered 26 meters. This impressive process takes an hour in three successive lock chambers, each of which is about 300 meters long. Here, too, small electric locomotives drag the ocean giants along the lock chambers. The ships are not permitted to travel unaccompanied. On August 3, 1914, the first ocean-going vessel traveled from one ocean to the other, although the official opening took place 12 days later. In Cologne, we arrive at the Caribbean. The dream of a water connection between the Atlantic and the Pacific came true within a period of 10 years.